You're watching this, so you're probably a programmer. Programmers like line numbers. Without them, we'd never know what the backtrace was pointing on. You turn them on with set number. Number. You turn them off with set no number. Ooh, ah. There are, of course, shorter ways to do this, and I leave it as an exercise to the listener to explore them with help number or help no number. Now, you're not going to want to do this every single time you open your file, so you're going to want to put it in your vimrc, like this. Yay! No comma, or no colon, because you don't do that. <laughs> At least not in your vimrc. Now, the line numbers that we have, number, are pretty much like the line numbers of any other IDE. What's Notable, though, is Vim has something called relative line numbers because it does a lot of stuff with relative line numbers. You turn those on by saying set relative number, and you turn them off with set no relative number. Now, you'll notice that when I set relative number, I've actually got the current line number to the left. This is called hybrid line number mode or something along those lines. The wording's a little different wherever you look. But what's important to know here is that what's going on is I actually have absolute and relative numbers running at the same time. If I preferred to just have a zero there, because this is the central point, I could do that by turning off, oops, no number, turning off absolute line numbers. And now everything is zero based, no matter where I move my cursor. I don't really like that very much. And I also don't like typing set number, set relative number all the time. So I've got a little function in my vimrc to just toggle between them. There's also some plugins that will toggle when you enter insert mode, it'll go into relative line number mode. And when you exit and go to normal mode, it will be absolute line numbers. The thinking being that when you're working in a file, you're f frequently doing things with relative line numbers. For example, if we wanted to delete this method and we were in relative regular line number mode, I'd say D followed by the number of lines followed by enter. So D, one, two, three, Put my cursor back, enter. D, what did I do? D, three, enter. Okay, that sucked, right? So that's why we have relative line numbers. I can just say, what line do I want to go down to? Oh, the one's end, and there's a three next to it, so D, three, enter. Yay! Now, I want to take a look at the line numbers as they appear when they encounter folded code. You'll notice that right now, in relative line number mode, they just go down straight past the lines of code, even though there are nine folded lines between lines four and five. Now in absolute mode, you'll notice that it goes from line 36 to line 45. And that's not a mistake, because in absolute mode, it is talking about what is actually going on in this file, not what's being displayed on the screen. But relative mode is about what's being displayed on the screen. And the reason for that is that DD, will take the entire folded block. It treats it as one thing, which is kind of funky. Um, it's not just DD. You can also say, like, for example, if I want this line that's folded and the one that's unfolded, I don't have to think about how many lines are in that folded method. I can say D to start this off, look down. OK, I want the add method, which is folded, and that's on 4. So I'm just going to say D4. And ta-da, they're both gone, and put them back. Now. Back in normal mo number mode, we have some additional funkiness when it comes to line numbers. Let's say I want to jump to line 39. And it's not there. Well, it isn't, it isn't. It is actually on line 39, but line 39 is folded. So if I expand this, ta-da, it drops to 39. Now, when you have folded code, you can have multiple levels of folded code, and you can open it up in different ways. So I can say Z lowercase a to just open up the top level of the fold. And the problem with that when you're jumping to a line number is that 
well, that one's folded too. You don't really know because unless you've memorized the line numbers of your code and what's going on in all of them, which most of us don't, and you're just not going to know what's there. So as a best practice, I recommend Z, capital A, for unfolding code when you're jumping into it so that the line, again, 39, Z, capital A, I'm right there on line 39. So if you're always expanding them fully, you will always jump into the correct line without having to expand anything else. And in most cases, your goal is just what's at that line that I'm being told about by a backtrace or a coworker. So that's what you want to do. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I can't actually get my cursor to the top or bottom of the screen. And that's because Vim likes to give you a little bit of a buffer. It's a little more obvious to think about. See, there's always those three lines above. Unless I get to the very top of the file, when, which of course it's going to let me go up there. And the same applies to the bottom. Now, you can change how many lines of buffer you have by saying set SO equals the number of lines of buffer you want. So let's say I don't want any buffer. Vim, let me go to the top of this file whenever I want. Now I can scroll right up to the top of the viewport. Yay! And same applies for the bottom. You can also give it more. Set SO equals 5. And now I've got 5 lines. So it's pretty much what you'd expect. Now the funkiness comes when you have, let's see, put this at zero. The funkiness comes when you have more lines in your SO than you can display on your page, or more specifically, more than half of what you can display on the page, because it's a buffer above and below. So here you can see I've got 25 lines displayed on the viewport, the 24 plus the current one. If I wanted to always keep my cursor in the middle, I just say set SO to some big number larger than one half of the page. I usually just say 999 because I don't really feel like counting how many lines are currently in my window depending on how I've sized it. And when you do that, you're always in the center, which is even cooler. No number. When you have pure absolute numbers. Note that they don't change at all, ever. Well, until I hit the top. So. That's kind of funky and something you may want to do. I usually leave it without four. I don't remember what the default is, but it works for me. And that's pretty much it for numbers. If this has been useful, please support me on Patreon. Thanks.